Hello, and welcome to Terraria Legendary Mode. N no, not that legendary mode. That legendary mode. I'd hop on the Everything seat if it weren't for the fact that I've never even been regular Master Mode, so jumping into the hardest challenge the game has to offer isn't exactly where I want to be. For now. But yeah, you heard me right. I've never even attempted a regular Master Mode playthrough, so adding For the Worthy to it is probably pretty darn stupid, as its boss changes, lava pools, and funny-looking danger fruit aren't exactly the most inviting circumstances. But, like, it's for the funny. One final thing to mention before I stop wasting your time here, this playthrough features a few texture packs, all of which will be in the description for the videos that they appear in. Oh, and it's all except for the one I made for this very playthrough, which allows me to have a stone golem slab head more akin to the little dude in my profile pic, as none of the Terraria hairstyles really come close to it. So with all that out of the way, let's begin. I jump in, immediately proving that I've never really done this before. And I make Garvel, who summarizes the entire playthrough in one sentence before I go ahead and destroy the environment highlighting some of the applied textures at work on a slime. It hops towards me, and I take it out thanks pretty much entirely to Garvel. So feeling good, I tackle some more slimes, and... This might take a while. Well, there's a cave right next door, so I hop into it, finding a huge tree cutting straight through where I find some stuff that wipes away any worry for what my forest town would look like. It's gotta happen. I, I don't make the rules. I loot more chests for a boomerang and radar, and just... Well, I'll let live commentary Michael get his thoughts out. Oh, well, that 2% two, 2 crit chance might save my life one day. Probably won't. If I have any footage where it saves my life, we'll cut to it now and... Further chests hold a wand of sparking for me to put way too much faith in, and a reds potion that, if I'm not careful, will be the classic case of keeping a valuable item forever and never using it. Spoiler alert, it goes untouched for the rest of the video. I step further into the cave and find the biggest triary equivalent to a stop sign that I can think of. So, I warp back to the peaceful morning, and oh, it's almost night time! Nope, 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 nope. Now, safe in my little rectangle, I make the calm and collective decision to go ahead. Cave time! Oh. So, reviewing my options, I declare that I didn't cave time hard enough. So, I jump back in and... Alright. New plan. With the morning nearing, I cleared out my yard with a casual little assist from the gods. From there, I wanted to explore more of the world, discussing future plans out loud. Just take a listen. Well, if I end up finding the Shimmer early enough in the playthrough, I'll gladly Shimmer Living Wood Leaf Wand, or the Wood Wand, with the uh, Finch Staff. Um, oh! Ah! Seeing as I happen to have a weapon from every class now, it's a good time to mention that while I usually stick with one class for an entire playthrough, I don't plan on restricting myself this time, so I'll be jumping around different classes all throughout for both strategy and the sillies. With that out of the way, I continue down the tree and perish pretty quickly. No! Someone I can spend my gold with. If I had some! Back at the surface, I domesticate some goober and jump straight into my early money-making method of choice. Critters. Taking a page out of Animal Crossing's book, critters are actually a pretty effective source of some early game coinage. And all the while, I'm starting a stockpile of fish bait to support my wildly untreatable fishing addiction that you'll see soon enough. So, when returning to the trees to retrieve my money, I get gnome, and I return again with a special gift for you all. Oh, for the viewers. There we go. Now my quest to get my money back, I... Eh, you know, I'm just gonna let these next few clips explain themselves. I could, like... Uh... No slides. Go. Please come back to me, Boomerang. <laughs> ah! And, yep, still here. I should probably leave with my money while I still have the chance, but... Unfortunately for this world... I guess fortunately for this world... I don't feel like it. Nope, nope, nope! Well, while watching some of my NPCs almost meet their journey's end... Wait, no, no! I actually get my money back with enough consideration for my own personal safety. And now... I'm gone. With a bit more exploring, I find a mushroom biome, which I remember is absolutely massive in this world seed. It promotes both the spawning of lots of treasure and lots of enemies. This won't take too long, right? 
Let's do something else. And by something else, apparently it's not, let's explore the right side of the world, because there's a big patch of purple grass that says no. I go ahead and block off the corruption, because for whatever reason I forgot that I had two huge trees nearby that'll do just that when hard mode rolls around. Next on the agenda, I die. After that, I head towards the unlooted mushroom biome before nightfall, remembering just how many viewers have probably been steaming away because I haven't been using the Finch staff ever since I got it. Well, at least after that blunder, things can't possibly get much worse. I went to the mushroom biome anyway. It actually went really well. I got a cloud in a bottle and some world generation straight out of another pixelated block game that I'm not sure I have to name drop. I busted in thanks to spotting a house in the dark, allowing me to easily nab a magic conch, allowing me to travel to the furthest reaches of my world without worrying about getting stabbed in the corruption or the jungle. I then stumbled across the dungeon, which I forgot is painted a random color in For the Worthy Seeds, and also faces the wrong way. I admire it. And rob it. But my journey's cut short by another corruption biome. Oh! You're huge. Anyway, after warping back to spawn, I craft the almighty cactus armor and begin making more homes for the people that keep finding their way into them. Like really, where do they come from anyway? Also, big apology to all those out there 1.4.4 spending hours getting this, but look. Oh! So, while background me spends the next 7 minutes or so catching fireflies, this is significant because by shimmering this rare creature, I can get a boost to my fishing power. Will I shimmer it anytime soon? Eh, give me some time. I mean, with where I'm at in progression, I can't be outside my house for more than 20 minutes without exploding, so shimmer will have to wait. So, with the sun rising on a new day, I use the magic conch to find the angler, who gives me one of the only quests that I can't do right now. Yeah, I'm not reading all that. Basically, I have to fish in the desert, but I haven't tracked down an oasis yet, so that will be on my agenda. But until then, it's time to displease the Lorax and lay out some housing. And no montage this time. You've been spoiled with enough of them. But I mean, just look at it. It's not done yet. I'll touch it up later. From there, I finally set out to find the desert, but instead I find myself at a big lava lake I need to cross. I'd like you to see just how long it takes for me to cross this, thanks to it being nighttime in legendary mode. Cue the time lapse. After what feels like ages, I finally cross it. Only to be forced back onto it. Cue another time lapse! It takes so long to get around at nighttime. Never again, I say, knowing full well it will happen again. Well, I actually reached the desert, and even found a pyramid with an item ready to nullify most of my movement issues. Yeah, it's a sandstorm in a bottle. More like a sand, um... Uh... I re-emerge, finding the oasis, only to remember that a day has passed and the angler's quest has changed. Yeah. Thanks to the thunderstorm, I find the jungle rather dramatically, and I only take a few steps in before making an equally dramatic escape, too. Thankfully, the angler gave me a bit of an easier quest. I mean, it's a fish made of dirt. I can work with that. And so, I cast my rod, one of many more castings that you'll bet I'll be cutting from this video. But just know, I end up right here. A lot. I even got some crates along the way. Let me bust this open. Yeah, nothing super significant. Oh, eight gold! I realized the pond was actually a bit small, so I peeped out another one close to my base. Cool transition. Just a few casts later, the dirt fish was mine. Now, all I have to do is go on over to the angler, Go hand it to him, and then I just... <gasps> what? Now's a good time to mention that getting this item is like a 1 in 80 chance. And I got up my very first quest. I I think this is the first playthrough where I'm gonna like the angler? Feels off. Speaking of feeling off, check out what the merchant's telling me. What did you just say? Yeah, he said it three times. So at this point, I notice I have 200 health and 11 defense, which makes me just barely eligible for a natural Eye Cthulhu spawn. That's right, I'm in his territory now. I'm going to distract myself with some building! Wow, isn't that much better! I also notice this house is too small, so now the building gets to look like this. 
don't blame me. Blame the zoologist. It's funnier that way. Well, this has all been boring. Look, I'm dying again. Well, back to more of the things that won't get me stabbed, like decorating. This part was a bit overdue anyway, so cue the time lapse. Hey, hi, sorry, I'm gonna be interrupting this time. But in case you haven't noticed, uh, at least on my YouTube channel, I've never really done any content like this before. So uh, there's gonna be a huge host of episodes ahead and I wanna make them as rich in quality as I can. So if there's any feedback, any at all that you wanna give, I'd appreciate it. Not that there's many of you, I've been clinging onto the same 12 subscribers for a year now, but I'll take whatever I can get. So yeah, that's about it, but hey, check it. This place doesn't look so bad now, huh? I want to put a much bigger focus on building this playthrough than I normally do with the game, seeing as I'm going to be going at a much slower pace than I normally would. Because, you know, legendary mode. So expect more interesting things to come. But in the meantime, I'll settle with something small like this. Whoa, look, it's the finished product. Just kidding, it will change. Nothing is definitive. Why did I stand here so long? It's time to move on to the angler again, where he gives me another quest requiring a pond I haven't found. I quickly jumped through the corruption to find the snow biome, and from there, I didn't actually fish because there was no pond. So, saddened, I try heading home. Yeah, nope, I actually got away from this one. Ah. Once home, I devise a master plan to make my own snow biome pond with a little help from a thing called gravity. I blow a hole through most of the pond, create a wooden barrier to guide the water, open the floodgates, and die. Look at that, it worked! Unrelated, but I finally decide to craft some mana stars in hopes of using more magic weapons. <gasps> ah! What weapons? Well, maybe the Vile Thorn. And trying to get it went just about how you might expect. With another quick hop into the chasms, I nabbed a musket, and the elusive second shadow orb gave me... Oh, nuts. Well, on the plus side, I realize that I've really undervalued the musket in most of my playthroughs, as it's incredibly valuable here. Who knows what great battles await where it could be handy? Ah. Yeah, quest fish. For some reason, I decided that uneven terrain was the move, so I lit up the top of these trees before the fight. Yeah, I really wasn't expecting to beat it. I didn't even get to the second stage, so a lot of work will need to get done before I can take it down for real. Looking at my chores list, I realized that I haven't actually found my way to the underworld yet. Which is probably for the best. Whoa. <gasps> Anyways. Oh. But I elected to ignore that. After finishing up my hold of the underworld, I did some light exploring until my pockets filled, so I warped back to base where I- Oh right, I forgot about y'all! Not knowing what else to do, I quickly led them all away from my home, picking away at them one at a time. I was temporarily cleaning up my pockets when I noticed that I was too far from my base for goblins to attack, allowing me to devise a strategy where I both approach and run from the invasion area to regulate some enemy spawns, utilizing the spiky balls dropped for some huge group damage. Can I explain it well? No. Will a time lapse explain it well? Yeah. And I, I will always hate you. Now, while the groups are a big issue, even single targets are a little bit too tanky in legendary mode. But little did I know, I was about to get a great fix for that. The Harpoon, a weapon I generally overlook, annihilated the rest of the invasion. I never realized how fast it fires when you're right beside an enemy, allowing you to get huge quantities of damage out at the risk of being close to your target. So consider this a strong recommendation for the weapon. It's got the official Captain Flare seal of approval. And ah! With that, the goblins meet their stinky, sad, really miserable demise. Despite the pain they brought me, I realized that it probably wouldn't have been as painful if I had some decent gear. So I went underground in hopes of snagging enough gold for some armor. The For the Worthy Seed actually increases the size of most ore veins, so it didn't take very long before I had lost more of it. 
I also found a new mushroom biome. Grant me a magic mirror and a tropical fish. I'll let live commentary Michael explain why that's so great. Oh yeah, hold on. Another texture pack I got. It's an axolotl. Because I just despise the shark. Oh yeah, and I found a little bit of demonite for a bow that I won't be making for another few hours. I'll get around to it eventually. With another angler quest requiring me to be on the surface, I went ahead and expanded my original fishing spot, making it a bit prettier and safer in the process. Yep. Didn't say it'd be fun. Or quick. When fishing, I actually got a frog leg, which will come in handy later on. So, distractions aside, I finally make gold armor just to realize that I don't have enough. <sighs> well, at least this angler quest allows me to prove that, yes, my master plan in fact worked quite perfectly despite the sprinkle of mortality involved. Anyway, I've been feeling too good lately. Time for danger. But thankfully, danger is a mixed bag of good news and bad news. Just take a look. Worth it. Later, I found the Tinkerer, so you know what that means. <clears throat> Workshop, rocket boots, gear combined, specter boost, bass statue, gold helmet. Hey, but that's actually pretty sweet, though. With a goblin trapped underground, I realize that I'm going to have to make some more homes, so I head up to the oasis to allow for easy fishing access while I get the pylons hooked up. I thought of this neat temple over water style. Now, if I could just get some hardened sand and, uh... Uh... Okay, so funny thing here, I'm looking at the wrong block for the furniture. I actually need smooth sandstone block, which I can make. So, sometimes I feel like there are just too many squares in this darn square game. Meanwhile, got a pretty cool item coming. Do you see it yet? It's actually on screen. No? Cool, don't feel bad about it, neither did I, so let's just cut to when I do. Abigail's Flower. Truth be told, I've only done one playthrough since the Don't Starve crossover update released, so much of its content feels brand new to me. Why am I telling you this? Well, it becomes apparent later, just don't you worry right now. Anyways, enough of that. Look, it's time for more danger! I knew that without any sort of arena, I'd have no chance against the eye, so I took a professional and absolutely non-cowardly approach. Oh, I see I Cthulhu. Bonk. Yeah, I'm not proud of it, but at least it'll despawn. Right, live commentary, Michael? Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh. Well, after avoiding that sudden boss encounter, I decided to head to the snow biome to make some more houses. In a blizzard. Right before midnight. I'll let the clip speak for itself. What? What? Uh, hi. Is that coming after me? I'm gonna take that as a yeah. Oh, shoot. Got the cave. Ah! Excuse me. Not ready to fight you. Oh. Okay, bye bye. This is an issue, because if I'm not mistaken, he's not going nowhere. Oh. 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 Okay. Go grab the snow? Or ice, ice, I should say. Nope. 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 As if that wasn't enough, the big eye wanted to come out to play again, so I just decided to lay low, stay underground for a while, and maybe come back up once the morning rolled around. Ah. Ah! I did the same thing. Not proud. With all this dodging of danger and general threat in my life, I decided to welcome it my own way. How do I do that? Well, by angering the god of torches, obviously. Yeah, I don't know what I was expecting. But let's try again. <laughs> you 
thought that was the one, didn't you? <sighs> so did I. Thankfully, the skeleton merchant decided to watch my misery, which reduces the majority of enemy spawns, meaning that we can get right back into the action. Yeah, I'm not sending you through that again. The Torch God's favor is now mine, making this video just slightly more appealing to look at. I mean, just look at those blues! It's beautiful. Also unrelated, but Deerclops kind of just left at some point? I was hoping he'd stick around for the sake of content, but it seems he doesn't want to make this video more dramatic anymore. A true shame. Now that I've got fancier torches, it's about time to head into the jungle, but more specifically, I'm looking for the Shimmer. Yeah, but some exploring later. My pockets are full and I haven't found it yet, so I'll try again another time. I also folded and finally used that frog leg. I've genuinely never made this accessory, but it's actually pretty handy. Oh, and if you're wondering why I didn't make the frog boots due to their great synergy with wings, don't worry, I don't know either. I've been regretting it since. I genuinely don't remember what I was doing here. Like, actually not a clue. But we all know how this is gonna be. Well, back to some more base building and wham! Yeah, that's it, that's all. I know what I said earlier about fancy building, but don't worry, this is all temporary. With the holiday season coming up, at least at the time of me saying this, I have a good idea in mind. But until then, 223 damage jump scare! Also, the goblins, they came back. And this time it was personal. Oh, no! oh don't worry, I uh, wiped the floor with them. May they regret the day they invaded... What was it called again? Oh, yeah. With that out of the way, I set up temporary housing for a desert pylon, experience a skill issue, and get a drop that pushes me to add another two hours of footage to scan through. Oh. Oh yeah, I die again too. In case you were curious. But before the grind begins, I want to make a quick graveyard to craft the gravedigger's shovel. Why I made it will be clear soon, but not immediately. Because me? Doing things in a concise order? That would be ridiculous. So, I head to the corruption make a farm of some sort in order to get all the pieces of ancient shadow armor, and in doing so, this happens. No, More pants! I finish up the farm too, basically forcing the eaters to spawn underneath me so I can poke at them with whatever weapons I want. Oh yeah, and uh, this happened. More pants! Oh, and you know how I've got all that wood to stop all the enemies from reaching me? Well, it doesn't work for everybody. While I still wasn't prepared as I'd like to be, I gave the fight a decent shot to see where I was at. If all this cowardly behavior is bothering you, don't worry, it's bothering me too. Next episode won't have any of it. That's a pinky promise. I, I promise, there's a pinky in there somewhere. Well, whether I wanted to be home or not, it's a good time to actually make that arena. Once I got to a satisfying point, I jumped back into the corruption farm to do what I do best. Hold down left mouse. Wait, before you panic, look at these spawn rates. It's beautiful. Yeah, but one entire blood moon later, not a single armor piece dropped, so maybe I should go back to the other thing. Next up, the traveling merchant swum by, reminding me that I want to add his hat to my collection of items to bring to the Shimmer, so you know what happens next. Alright. I never checked what he was selling. And now all I'll have is that one split second of footage I can refer to. And be sad about in post. In post, Michael here? Yes. I am very sad. I then took a minute to reflect on my actions. All right, back to murder. Whoa. One step. What? You? Huh? What? What? And if that wasn't enough, the game also threw a blood moon at me. Just, just look at how many of these dudes I had to kill. I tried to get the shark tooth necklace without any luck, but I got five do-overs, so I guess the game's gonna make me work for it. 
On the topic of getting accessories worn around the neck, I remember the Magnum Lumine... The Magilumine... It's this thingy. It makes me go fast. I realized that with both this on my armor, I can move at stupid fast speeds for this stage of the game. So there's only one item that can perfect this loadout. The Anklet of the Wind. Is it a good idea? Nah, probably not. Is it pretty funny? Oh yeah. So I return to the jungle for a few hours, meaning that it's time to whip out the old underground jungle checklist. Alright, let's see here. I die. Check. I find great loot that isn't what I'm looking for. Check. I die again. Double check. Accidentally summon Queen Bee. Check. Get outmaneuvered by Queen Bee. Check. Some sort of surface vent gets ignored. Yep. Check. Get stuck in the same spot for way too long. Check. Get distracted by good loot. Check. Make some stuff out of jungle resources. Check. Reforge the new- Oh my goodness! Wonder why I haven't found the anklet yet. Check. Accidentally find the temple. Check. Give up. Yeah. Big check on that one. Soon as I got so lucky with the golden bug net, and also did a little questing off camera for the full angler set, I decided to get a little silly and use some of the underworld critters for some lava fishing. I was hoping for a lava proof fishing hook from a crate, but all I got was burnt. I did get some of the local fish though, which will come in handy later. With my lava bait all gone and my crate potion still running, I went over the jungle for a last ditch effort for the anklet. Random crate luck. Huge check. <sighs> now I can finally put this checklist away and... Wait. Forget to actually use the next 16. Okay, that's a check. At this point, I continued my fishing spree, nabbing some corrupt crates and oysters. Unboxing the corrupt crates, not only did I get that vile thorn, but I'd be remiss if I didn't draw attention to, wait for it, the hurtful ball of hurt. I busted open the oysters in hopes of maybe getting a pink pearl to shimmer and... What? At long last, I actually make the lightning boots, so now it's time to finally get around to some decorating. Well, I've been putting it off for long enough now. It's time to prepare myself. I grab all the helpful potions I have, making some new ones along the way. And I even go out of my way to nab some honey fins after getting distracted by a fishing quest. And while on the topic of honey, I snatch some of that too for some extra regen in my arena. So finally, I prep my pockets, and I sit in my arena ready to summon the eye on my own terms. Okay, maybe not my own terms, but we'll roll with it. Okay, admittedly, that was pretty anticlimactic, but remembering all the times this guy poked away at me this playthrough, and how my finances could always use a boost, I challenged him again for his first arrival, and again for showing up right after realizing it didn't have a solidifier, and again after he interrupted my post-explosion coping process, and again after he intruded on my shadow armor farming. Anyway, if you're struggling with the IQ loot all, this loadout right here has the official Captain Flare seal of approval. To wind things down, I fished up this bozo and I opened up all my treasure bags, Give me some surprisingly good reforges on the shields. And with that, well, that's just about the end of it. Thanks for watching the first episode, and to get out of continuing this semi-awkward outro, I've decided to put myself in harm's way.
next time on Terraria Legendary Mode. How is Michael gonna fix his storage issue? Will he actually defeat more than one boss in a video? Will the Shimmer ever get found? And what enemy kills him an embarrassingly high number of times? All this and more next time! When is next time? Next time!